in central Belize. The Tapir Mountain Nature Reserve covers over 8,000 square miles of protected jungle. Beneath the dense rainforest, Belize has one of the largest and most extensive cave systems in Central America. A two-hour drive from the closest town and a 45-minute trek through the thick undergrowth lies the entrance to an enormous cave. To get into the cave, you have to swim across this deep pool of water, and then you enter this really dark, mysterious environment, and you have to climb over the rocks, and then you start your journey into the cave. In 1989, archaeologists began mapping the bowels of this complex cave system, navigating paths barely shoulder wide and traversing across underground rivers. Caving is not for the faint of heart. The air is thick. It can be muddy, tight, claustrophobic. This is rough and difficult terrain. Archaeologists travel half a mile up a shallow river until the cave reveals an enormous limestone labyrinth. In a small, tucked away chamber, a 12-foot climb from the cave floor, they come across a surreal sight, a skeleton unlike anything they'd ever seen. This specimen is delicate in size. It has an elongated skull. And there's a substance over it that gives it a shiny, jewel-like appearance. It really looks like something from another world. The remains of the individual appear to have been left undisturbed in the dark cave for centuries. But why would someone be here? The body's right arm is outstretched above its elongated skull. Its legs are splayed apart. Two vertebrae are crushed. And its jaw appears frozen open as if screaming in horror. It really does look like the scene of a murder. The trauma to the spine looks like something that may have been done with a large knife. This person likely suffered a tragic and extremely violent attack before falling or being pushed to the ground to die. The remains have been dubbed the Crystal Maiden by archaeologists due to their sparkly appearance and petite size. But the glittery crust encasing the bones has cemented them to the cave floor, making them impossible to transport for study. Exploring the maze-like cave further, archaeologists uncover more shocking human remains. Bones are piled up in dark corners and wedged into tight crevices in the rock walls. In addition to the Crystal Maiden, they find the remains of 13 more humans, adults, children, and even infants. So some individuals were hidden out of plain sight in the crevices of the cave walls, and the remains were not intact anymore, and many had suffered cracks and damages, and all of them had this crystallized coating. One discovery is found high in a hollow that's only reachable by a ladder. This person is down on their knees with their hands bound behind their back. Others seem to have been pushed or thrown to their deaths. It appears that they suffered the same fate as the Crystal Maiden. While precise dating is impossible, archaeologists determine, based on ceramics and charcoal found nearby, that all of the human remains are from the same time period, between 700 and 900 CE. Like the Crystal Maiden, many of the victims share the characteristic elongated skull Skull flattening in early infancy was a traditional beautification practice of the Maya. Who would have been living in the area of the cave at this time? Additional lab testing showed that the strange crystallized crust covering the skeletons is actually calcite. Calcite is a common mineral that makes up limestone. It comes in all sorts of textures and colors. Water interacting with calcite gets redeposited on the bones of the skeleton, forming tiny crystals that interacting with light give the bones here their sparkle. This cave system, like much of Belize, is entirely limestone. Over the years, water and moisture have dissolved and transferred the calcite, creating unique rock formations and impressive stalactites and stalagmites. The individuals were found in areas that were either submerged in water for some time or in the direct flow of water. The archaeologists believe there must be some significance to the location of these remains, given that the Maya ventured into these deep caves at great risk. 
Exploring the caves for more evidence to explain what happened to these people, the archaeologists discover some relics with a dark purpose. They found weapons made of both extremely sharp obsidian and stingray spines, known to have been used in bloodletting rituals. Blood served a very important purpose in Maya culture and was often offered to the gods through the process of bloodletting, so taking blood from the lips, the tongue, or even the arms. This was clearly an important ritualistic and spiritual site with great power for the Maya. Bloodletting is a non-fatal process. It's very controlled, very painful, but something different seems to have happened here. The gruesome deaths suggest even more violent rituals could have been taking place inside this cave. But why? Archaeologists identify a stone altar made of stalactites with a four-foot-tall carved stingray spine as its centerpiece. They believe this is where Maya priests would have performed their rituals. This altar is where the cave gets its name, Aktum Tunichil Muknal, meaning the Cave of the Stone Sepulcher. Next to the altar on the floor of the cavern, archaeologists find ceramics and broken pieces of pottery that date to between 700 and 900 CE, the same as the skeletons in the cave. Some of the pots have holes right through them, seemingly rendering them useless. Pottery that was used as an offering was often intentionally marked with keel holes, holes that were punched into the ceramic and believed to release the souls associated with the offering. Cave environments help preserve artifacts that otherwise wouldn't survive. And because of their use as religious and ceremonial spaces, archaeologists often find a lot of artifacts inside caves. And this cave is one of the richest examples with more than 1,400 artifacts recovered. Closer to the mouth of the cave, archaeologists find offerings of pots with food residue that are dated to be from as early as 250 CE. That's at least 550 years before the Crystal Maiden appeared. The Maya had been coming to this cave for nearly a thousand years seeking answers to questions that the physical world could not give them. But while experts move deeper into the cave, the offerings get more numerous and more elaborate. It seems likely that the human remains are victims of human sacrifice, the most extreme form of offering to the gods. But going from offering food and pottery to blood, and then suddenly using human sacrifice seems like a drastic leap. So what could have caused this sudden escalation to human sacrifice? Deep in a cave in central Belize, archaeologists have uncovered offerings to the Mayan gods and found multiple skeletal remains that appear to have been victims of human sacrifice. Why had these people been killed and left in such a remote location? Between 250 CE and 950 CE, the territory of the Maya covered much of Central America into Mexico, and its heart was the heavily jungled region that is now modern-day Belize and Guatemala. In the Mayan cosmos, caves were the portals to Sibalba, the Mayan underworld. And in this area, historians and archaeologists have looked at oral traditions and different archaeological evidence. And this cave in particular, Aktum Tunichil Muknat, might hold a special connection to Chak, the Mayan rain god. The Maya believe rain was made from inside the earth, so Chak was associated with caves. In Chichen Itza, a large Maya city in Mexico, Priests sacrificed children to petition the rain gods by throwing them into sacred water-filled sinkholes. Experts note that at the beginning of the 9th century CE, this was a period that was marked by a dramatic and severe decline in rainfall. The Crystal Maiden and the other victims inside the cave increasingly appear to have been a desperate attempt to petition Chak, the Mayan rain god, for those life-giving rains. This could explain why the human sacrifices occurred and why they were placed so close to water. 
where they could be symbolically closer to chalk. The Crystal Maiden itself was entirely submerged underwater at several points throughout the centuries. Extreme drought may have been the beginning of the end for the Maya civilization. Unfortunately, the sacrifice made by the Crystal Maiden and the 13 other souls could not prevent the collapse of the Maya Empire.